I'm Ryan, a.k.a. Agent M. I'm Jamie, a.k.a. Agent 4. Agent 4. <laughs> Agent 4. And we've got four. Jim Zub with us, writer of so many things. Brand new news just came yes. out last yes. night. Yes, very exciting stuff. You want to say it? You want me to say it? I want you to say okay. it. I want the, I want, I I want like giving the creators the ability to oh, talk about their you. books. I'm so, yeah, it's like a dream come true. I'm writing uh, the Avengers Weekly, uh, No Road Home, that's coming out in February. And so uh, our No Surrender team is back on the attack. So we've got Al Ewing, Mark Wade, and myself uh, running up an epic Avengers 10-part story. And the art team is Sean Isaacs and Paco Medina. And we're going to knock you guys out with the biggest and craziest Avengers story yet. Yeah, this is starting in February. Uh, what I really like is we showed the first cover. Yeah. And uh, we did, I did a panel with Al after the announcement. So we were talking a little bit more about it. And the cover has Hercules right there, really oh, yeah. big. But also a little bit of Rocket Raccoon butt. Yeah, it's uh, the, the first cover. We got such a great eclectic selection of Avengers. So not all of them have been revealed. But on that cover, you see Herc. You see Rocket Raccoon. I think Al revealed yesterday that uh, Spectrum's going to be in the series as well. He, I think he also said Blue Marvel will be involved yes. in some way. And I was like, I love Blue yeah, Marvel. We got so many good characters in this mix. Uh, I love Monica Rambeau. I'm glad we got her in there as well. It's just going to be such a cool... It, it's so fun coming back into this. Like, we did the weekly series, No Surrender, and we got just a great head of steam, and we had so much fun doing it. And when the last issue was coming out, we were sending around congratulations emails to the team. And I said, man, it feels like we just figured out this weekly thing, and now we're breaking up the band. And Tom goes, yeah, about that. <laughs> <laughs> what else you guys got? And yeah. so we instantly kind of went into uh, attack mode and have been working on it in secret for over six months. It's awesome. Yeah. So cool. So you're writing Avengers, you're writing, you've been writing Champions. Right. You write for a lot of teams. Is it hard to write for so many characters? I love writing team books because what makes great drama for me is the dynamic of how characters interact with each other. So it's not just about, I mean, I would do a solo book, I'm sure, but with the team dynamic, it's always something different, whether it's the relationships between those characters, the conflicts between them, the way their powers interact in a combat situation, I always find fun new little combinations, and that's one of the things I enjoy about it. Like when I wrote Uncanny Avengers, I think we started with like five characters and we ended up with like eight or nine because I just keep pulling people into my gravity well. And Champions, that was the other announcement we had yesterday, was Champions getting a new number one in January. Um, my uh, collaborator on an image series called Wayward is now coming on board to draw it. His name's Stephen Cummings. He's a phenomenal artist. And we're just adding a slew of team heroes to the champions. Kamala Khan is now the leader of the champions in a formal sense. She's put out the call and basically said, hey, this is our world that we're inheriting. If you're a young hero and you want to fight for what's right and make the world a better place, join me. And she gets a gigantic response all over the world. And so the original tagline for champions was, uh, the world you know, still needs heroes. And so we expanded on that. We said, you know, the world still needs heroes, and there are heroes all over the world. So we're going to take them on this, like, crazy, big, epic, global whirlwind of action and drama and lots of surprises. That's so fun. Now, we had a question in here from Social. They sure. asked, what is the best part of writing the Avengers? Honestly, it sounds really, uh, I mean, my inner 10-year-old is constantly, like, screaming. I grew up reading Earth's Mightiest Heroes, collecting those stories, adding a new chapter to the Marvel Universe. I have a really dorky thing that I do. Every time a new issue comes out, I would go to like the wiki or something, and a fan has instantly updated everything the day of release. <laughs> so it's like it became real Marvel history that day. Or people ask me questions or they get into it. Like, I love that feeling that the Marvel Universe is constantly building and growing, and being able to contribute to it and add a new part new characters, new scenarios, unexpected uh, new elements. That's the stuff that excited me as a kid, and that's what I really love most about writing the Avengers or anything at Marvel, honestly. Heck yeah. Yeah. So when you write for these teams, how do you, uh, have you ever kind of given yourself a conflict, like made it hard for yourself to have two characters or maybe more have a hard time getting along? Absolutely. Like one of the weirdest things is that, um, it's not weird. It makes sense. Like, fans will sometimes say, you know, why are you being mean to these characters? You know, don't you like them? It's like, I love them. I want you to see how heroic and amazing they are. 
and that they can overcome adversity, you know? So right now, Sam Alexander has lost the Nova helmet. He doesn't have his Nova powers, and the Nova fans are like, what have you done, you know? And I'm like, look, the reason why we've got Sam in this tough situation is because he's more than just the helmet. He's a great character, he's a heroic character, and he's got to go through difficult situations. You know, the highs and the lows are part of the adventure. And so when you put a character through something difficult, it feels weird because you do care about them because you do want to do right by them. But part of our job is to be dramatic and tell big stories. Part of our job is to push them to the limits and have them show us why they're so great. Yeah. And so in some ways, the, the characters I love the most are the ones that I'm focused the most on most intensely. If I didn't like a character, I'd just ignore them. <laughs> oh, I know, it's uh, crazy like that. But. We're talking about the new Champions book, but I really want to talk about the current Champions book sure. real quick because uh, the issue that came out the, this recent week uh, on, on one of my shows called Marvel's Pull List, it was one of my favorite books. Like it oh, was thanks. like we, we spotlighted it because I just love it. I, I love when you go sword and sorcery and like getting to do that yeah. at Marvel is the jam. Uh, it is how did that greatest. issue come together or this story arc? I love sword and sorcery stuff. I grew up Conan the Barbarian, Dungeons and Dragons. These were like the bedrock of my youth. And so two of my favorite storylines at Marvel, uh, there was a two issue story that they did in Uncanny X-Men. I want to say 190, 191 when Cullen Gath turned yeah. Manhattan into yeah. a fantasy world. And the Asgard Wars ones where you have the new mutants and X-Men in Asgard running around with Loki. Also, Arthur Adams destroying the, the planet with his power of stuff. Art. Like, it was so incredible. And so those two storylines are tattooed in my brain. Yeah. I know every panel, every yeah. page. And I was like, man, those fantasy analogs of those characters, those taking those elements, that peanut butter and chocolate combination, whatever you want to call it, is so great. I just want to have that feeling. You, you don't want to navel gaze and try and redo it, but something in that slant, something in that kind of momentum. And so I pitched at Tom, my editor, Tom Brevoort, um, hey, I want to do this sword and sorcery epic. I think we can tie in the man thing. I've got all sorts of funky ideas. And he was like, this is out there stuff, but if you ground it in a good character story, I'm up for it. And that's really always been the thing. Can you make it fun and dramatic? Is there something more than just the surface level of this change that we're doing to the characters? What can we learn about them? How can we make that that much more compelling? And so I get to, we came up with all these cool fantasy versions of the champions. So instead of Ms. Marvel, she's the Mystic Marvel, right? Instead of, uh, you know, Miles Morales, Spider-Man, we've got the Shadow oh, Spider. And he looks so cool. Yeah, he's got this big cloak and he's whipping daggers all over the place. So instead of Snow Guard, our new uh, hero from the North, she's Snow Gore. And she's like this beast changing druid who can turn into monsters. So it's like really fun stuff like that where you, they're looking at them through a different lens and showing us something cool about them. Yeah. So awesome. we're talking about swords and sorcery and huge epic stuff right. on such a big scale. Let's take it down. How do you make characters so relatable even in that kind of setting? Thanks. This is a question in from social. So if yeah, you guys have more, social. hashtag okay. Marvel NYCC. So one of the most important things to realize is no matter who these characters are, the reason why people love Marvel characters, and they always have, is because people like you know, Stan Lee and all your favorite writers have made them empathetic, that they have traits that we can see ourselves in. It's not just, they are cool and they have great powers and they have awesome costumes, but it's also what they feel and how they emote. Peter Parker is the flagship character of Marvel because of the empathy we have for him, because he's the everyman. Kamala Khan is like this generation's Peter Parker, as far as I'm concerned, because she has these real intrinsic qualities of working hard and responsibility and trying to do her best in a very difficult situation. And her struggles, we see ourselves in them. You know what I mean? That's why they're great characters. Same with Miles, same with Viv Vision. Yes, she is a synthesoid teaming girl, but she's struggling to understand her emotional self and wants to compartmentalize emotional things that she can't deal with. We go through traumas. We have difficult situations in our lives. So it's about looking past the surface traits of superpowers and finding core personality traits or emotional traits that we, that speak to all of us. And that's really where I sort of start. I go, okay, these powers are awesome. Yes, I love sword and sorcery, 
but what am I going to tell you about Miles the person? What can we tell you about Sam Alexander the person or Amka Aliak? Like, you've never lived in Nunavut up in northern Canada, but the feeling of not knowing whether your your culture, you know, as a, a, a you know as a she's a native uh, woman or her sort of modern life as a person, you know, in Canada trying to figure out where she fits. That's an intrinsic thing that anyone from any kind of culture can understand. Your family's expectations versus your own needs and wants as a, as a person. And so that's what we key in on rather than just saying, okay, there are a bunch of superpowers in a costume. And so I know I've got a story working when I can tap into that sort of stuff. And when you have really good editors like Alana and Tom, they're wonderful to bounce these ideas off of and they go, hey, you really got something here. Let's go a little bit deeper. Let's dig a little bit harder on it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, That's what one of the things. The comic's so great. Yeah. <laughs> one of the things I love about the, the book is what you were talking about before uh, with Shadow Spider. Yeah. And, you know, like these different versions, and especially where we see Sam in the story. But then visually, I, I know you're such a visual guy. Yeah. Uh, and you are so tied into sword and sorcery, the fantasy stuff. How much of it is you? How much is the artist? How much is it just like a full, you know, collaboration where it's like a big old chocolate chip cookie? It's so good. So Max Dunbar is our artist on this Weird World story. And I've actually worked with him previously on a Dungeons and Dragons comic series. So we're well in tuned on the sorcery trip. And I send him a pile of reference, but I also trust him because we've got a really good working relationship. And I throw out big visual ideas and I'm like, look, we want the armor to look like this or this is how this can come together. Sean Isaacs, who designed up those fantasy characters and did that gorgeous triptych cover that's going over 25 to 27, got into that fantasy sphere and we talked back and forth about what, what traits to keep from their original costumes and what can we enhance and sort of twist in fun and funky ways. But at some point you also need to know where to like stand back and let the art team do what they do best. So you describe a cool fight and then you're like, go for it, go for broke. There's a sword fight at the end of 25, which is um, a mystery knight fighting one of the crystal warriors from the old Crystar series. And I literally told Max, I said, use as many or as few panels as you want, but here's the main notes of that fight. Make it epic. And he went in with a lot of little panels, like staccato kind of rhythm, like you were seeing every little instant, a bunch of snap close-ups, and it worked incredibly well. So rather than me trying to like squeeze the life out of an artist and say, you must do it like this. What I want to do is get them in the same headspace or excitement and then let them roar and show us what they got. Hell yeah. yeah. You should just act out a sword fight with each other one day. You know, uh, like nerf swords. Max is a fellow Canadian, so I'm just going to show up at his studio and we'll just start practicing <laughs> it out. That'd be good. Yeah. I, lo I love seeing that stuff come to life, like exactly what you're talking about. You put the stuff down on the page and you hope that it will come through. And when the art team elevates it to a whole other level, when you're working with great people who not only get what you want to do, but want to add to it and build on it, it's the best feeling in the world. Yeah. I, I like that you, you've worked with Max before. Yeah. You've worked with Steve before. Like, how much fun is it for you to have, do these projects in other places and then be like, hey, do you want to do Marvel stuff well, with this me? this is the thing. Like, I, it feels like a family. I mean, the comics community is a great family. We go to conventions all summer and it's like a road show. You're seeing your pals, you're touching base, you're asking how's the family. You, you get to know these people and you get to trust them and that's why it's such a good working relationship. And the same thing at Marvel. The reason why I've done so many works with, you know, like Tom Brevoort is because we've built up a really good creative trust. And so um, when you find an artist that, that gets what you do, you just want to keep them, you know, in the fold. And so as you're developing stuff in the back of your head, you're like, you know, it'd be a really good fit for this. And hopefully you don't mess it up. You just recommend someone and they deliver. And thankfully, like people like Sean Isaac, we worked together. He did two issues of Thunderbolts with me. Then he did Uncanny Avengers, Champions, and now Avengers No Road Home. Like we are locked in. We're a really good pair. It works well, you know. It's a, and we're doing that a lot at Marvel right now, which I really, really enjoy seeing a writer artist continue to work together. It's an important thing yeah. for you guys in, in making great art, uh, but also for the fans to 
come back, like they know what they're going to get. Yeah, they know absolutely. there's a synergy that produces something that's more than the sum of its parts. Totally. And I think you see that a lot. Like you said, those relationships build up and that trust that we know what that person's strengths are and how we can get the most out of it. And they, you know, drive us to do better and more. And it's not, people think the writer is like coming up with everything. It is so not true. The artist is possibly the, the most, I mean, it's the first thing you see. You open up the book, you look at that cover. The visual storytelling is comics. Yeah. And so they bring so much to every page and our ability to sort of interact and, and build up something special together. It is a synergy across the board. Okay. And I want to have that interaction. I don't want to hand a script off and walk away. I want to be have a constant communication, you know, right through the lettering. What can we do to make it good? What can we do to enhance what's there so that you guys are getting the best issue possible month after month? Heck yeah. It's yeah. so fun. Well, yeah, there's a panel in the Champions issue that came out this week of Riri Ironheart in she's in Weird World and it's the top panel on on the page and she's fighting one of the warrior I already know the one you're going to yeah but it like there's the sound effect that is sort of so important to the yeah. flow of it the way she is positioned she's the, just unleashing this mace strike yeah it, and it's funny too cuz again you you write it and you say she's giving it her all she's putting her whole weight of her body into it and then max just takes it to the next level crush. and he's sending that rat creature like streaking off the panel it's so great like that exaggeration i love that cartoony quality this stuff reminds me a little bit of art adams or greg capullo the kind of artist where they've got a detail to them but there is a slight exaggeration. They're pushed a little beyond the norm. And for Weird World, it's such a perfect fit. You don't just want photo realism. What you want is this heightened sense of realism. You want this texture and this intensity. And that's what Max brings to every page. Hell yeah. Yeah. So good. Sweet. So great. So if there was an individual character that you would write for, can you think of one? Can Say you, that again? If there was an individual character oh. to write for. So the solo book, I would love to, I mean, everyone says, you know, the big hitters, whatever, Spider-Man, I would love to write more of. But um, I got a hankering for Blade. I want to write, I mean, swords are my thing, but <laughs> I want Blade to just be hunting monsters across the Marvel Universe. That would be such a fun ride. I get my monsters, I get my supernatural the coolest guy in the Marvel Universe, digging into the dark corners of the supernatural and messing it up. Yeah. Love it. That'd be so love good. it. Pitched. <laughs> Pitched. Uh -oh. It's out there. All has right. to happen now. Stevie Sibolsky? Let's do this. <laughs> On that note, Jim, thank you so much for being a part thank of Marvel you. Live. Uh, get back home safely. Thank you, and we'll be right back.